So let's, let's talk about these kind of one by one. Um, nobody picked the momentum of the skater is conserved because everything is frictionless. Conserved is, means constant. I hope you know by now that if the momentum was conserved of the skater, then that's saying that the, the momentum of the skater is constant, that there are no significant interactions with the outside world. Is the momentum of the skater constant? And I'll remind you that momentum is a vector. How many would say that the momentum vector of the skater is constant throughout this problem? How about that it changes throughout, the, uh, during this problem sometime? Okay, it changes direction as she's moving around. Momentum is certainly not constant. She reaches out, grabs the pole. In other words, the pole is suddenly pulling on her toward the center of her circle and, and changing her momentum all the time as she goes around in a circle. So momentum isn't conserved. Of course, nobody picked that. Uh, but a lot of you picked all of the above. So that would uh, rule that out kind of right off the bat. The momentum, her momentum is not constant because there's an outside force, the pole. The pole doesn't have any friction force on her. But it is the thing, if she holds on to the pole, it is the thing pulling her toward the center of the pole and keeping her going in a circle. If, there were, if her momentum was to be constant the whole time, constant means in direction as well as magnitude, and that would just mean she kept going in a straight line the whole time and didn't grab the pole. Uh, B, the angular momentum of the skater is conserved because the pole is frictionless. Okay, to the extent that it is frictionless, which I told you that it is, yes, that's true. If, if, the ang if there's no friction, then she will continue to go around that thing at a constant speed. So her angular momentum around that pole is not going to change. But, but then you come to this idea of, of what was going on when she was moving straight. So I just want to point out to you that when she was moving straight, there was no torque on her. There was nothing causing her to change her angular speed. Um, or, sorry, change her angular momentum. Ang that includes angular speed, but anyway. The, that's kind of the path that, that she would have taken if she didn't grab that pole. I'm going to put the pole on her left right now. And then from then on, <clears throat> as she... As she circles around the pole, you could say, well, that angle theta is changing with time. So the question is, was, theta was there an angular momentum before she grabbed the pole? This gets at this number C here also. Was there an angular momentum before she grabbed the pole? Was the angle, was her angle changing as she moved along here in a straight line? So let me draw a, a something, and we'll measure the angles and try to decide if they're changing. Is that angle different than that one, different than that one? They are. Her angle with respect to that pivot point and what we call zero angle is changing the whole time. She, the upshot of that is she does have angular momentum about what I call the pivot point, I didn't talk much about it, but I immediately called that pole the pivot point. I didn't have to, but I, could, but I did. I call that pole the pivot point. She has angular momentum around that pole. That may seem odd to you, but the angle is clearly changing. The other thing that's changing, unfortunately, is this rotational inertia, I, because that length, the length of the vector r is changing. So two things are changing at once. And, and you might wonder whether angular momentum is constant while she's moving in a straight line. 
And all I would say is, if there's no torque, I would go back to this. I mean, I could tell you angular momentum is constant, but I could also just go back to this and say, is there a net torque on her while she's moving in that straight line? And since there's no net force and the only forces are up and down on her while she's moving in that straight line, there's no torque, there's no torque that would uh, change her angular momentum either into the board or out of the board. And if there's no torque that would cause that, then you probably want to say her angular momentum is constant, that it isn't changing. Yeah? So um, does that mean that like at any time an object is moving in a straight line, you can just arbitrarily pick a point and say this is the pivot point and now I have angular momentum around this pivot point? You can. So in answer to that, let's think about the pivot point. I chose the pole. Why did I choose the pole? Because later on, she's literally circling the pole. So it's a good point to pick for later on. But what if she, what if it was a different situation? What if the pole was right there? Is the angle of this vector r changing as she gets closer and closer to the pole? Not if we take the pole as the pivot point, then that angle isn't changing at all. Does she eventually circle around the pole after she gets there? No. <laughs> she doesn't circle at all. She runs into the pole, and her momentum isn't conserved because she hits the pole, but the momentum wasn't conserved anyway. Her angular momentum is conserved because it was zero, and it's still zero. I, I could also put her on the other side. What if the pole was over here and she grabbed it like that? She would have angular momentum in the other direction. And all I did was move the pivot point. I didn't change her at all. So the short answer is yes, you do have angular momentum uh, even if you're moving in a straight line if you're off the pivot point, if you're not moving at the pivot point or away from it. Yeah? I, I guess I don't understand why momentum is not conserved for option A. I think we learned like in, in elastic collisions, there's a change of direction, but momentum is conserved. Or if there's like a ball um, bouncing on a floor um, with no dissipation of energy, it's changing direction all the time, but its momentum is conserved. Um, the, so the bouncing ball, I would say its momentum is not conserved because its momentum is changing direction. So, so, so that's, it's, it's not a constant momentum if its momentum is changing direction. And in fact, you, you know why. The, re, the way you change momentum is by having an outside force, and a bouncing ball has an outside force. It has the floor acting on it that changes its momentum from downward to upward. I mean, that's, a, that's like a canonical example of conservation of momentum. In a physics test, they always, text, they always give examples of the bouncing ball, how momentum is conserved if you have an ideal bouncing ball. So I, I guess I'd like to see one of those canonical exam tests because it's simply, I mean, unless you want to say the magnitude of the momentum, which may be true, but the momentum vector I hope you'll agree is different when the ball is going down than when it's going up. Elastic, elastic collision is, I, I think what you're thinking is, let's take these two objects and make that our physical system. And then there's no interactions from the outside. And so when you take two objects, you've taken a large enough physical system that the momentum of those two objects is conserved. And so the momentum of one of them can change. The momentum of the other one changes the opposite direction. But it's the momentum of a larger system of two objects that you've decided is, is approximately conserved. But the momentum of either one of those two cars clearly changes as they hit each other, I, I guess is the way I would say it. But I mean, you're right. The two cars hitting each other is uh, probably close to a canonical example. But the physical system is both cars rather than just one.
And so both cars, each car changes its momentum. But the sum, the total, doesn't. And so this is partly about what physical system do you pick. And I just picked the skater. If I had picked the skater and the pole, I still have a problem because the pole is attached to the ice. The reason why this, when the skater comes by and grabs the pole, the pole doesn't just go off with her is because it's attached to the ice. So there's something, there's the ice is putting forces on the pole. The ice is attached to the floor, to the earth. You know, it's, you, you start to get carried away with, with how big a system you have to get to conserve momentum in, in this problem. It's a good question, though, because conservation of momentum does require you pick a physical system that has negligible interactions with the outside world. Um, let, me, let me just finish this before I say one more thing about things moving in a straight line. Um, I, I put C in there because everybody wants to put, C, wants to answer C, or not everybody, a lot of you didn't, but so many of you did that I want to stop you from ever thinking anything like that again. Um, momentum and angular momentum have different units. They do not change into each other. That would be like energy changing into a tire, or I don't know, <laughs> there's, I'm not even sure what, uh, uh, 20 kilograms changing into uh, 300 Kelvin. You know, these are things, if they have different units, then they don't change into each other. But because they're not, they're, they're not, they can't be compared that way. Now, so, so really, what I want you to think about is take them one by one. Don't put the two together. What, this, what answer C does is it puts two ideas together that don't belong together at all. I wrote this, that equation for translational motion and that one for rotational motion because they are separately true. And sometimes you have to think of just one of them to talk about what's going on. And sometimes you have to think of both and work out the complications of both of them. But they both have to be true. Yeah? So can you tell me again, so you're saying the angular momentum has to be conserved because there's no torque acting on the system? That, that's my conclusion. There's no torque acting on the skater. The pole, you might have explained this, I, I think I just didn't understand. If it's a frictional, I, I cheated this a little bit, I made it a frictionless pole. You know, it's, it's a metal pole, really slippery, uh, somebody put oil on it, whatever. It's a frictionless pole. If it's a frictionless pole, then all it's going to do is pull her toward the pole. And since that's the pivot point, the R vector for her, when she's, after she pulls it, the R vector for her is to the left and the force on her is, by the pole, is to the right. There's a force toward the center of a circle. We've talked about this a couple of times. If you're going around in a circle, so the force and R are opposite to each other, which means the sine of 180 degrees is zero and there's no torque as long as it's frictionless. As soon as there's friction, all bets are off, she will slow down, angular momentum will go somewhere else because of the interactions with the outside world. 